that'll take you 30 minutes to make that will wow all your friends and you'd be happy to have in any fantastic restaurant. Let me show you the ingredients that we're going to use today. I have literally got new potatoes, asparagus, some nice Alaskan salmon, some little baby plum tomatoes and a couple of cloves of garlic. I'm going to make a really tasty dish out of that. So the first thing that we're going to cook are our potatoes. Now I've got some boiling water on here, and I always start new potatoes in boiling water. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to salt this water, and I'm also going to take a lovely nice piece of fresh mint and throw it in the water. That really gives the potatoes a nice extra dimension. So just carefully drop them in, making sure not to burn yourself. Just like that. And those potatoes are literally the longest cooking part of the dish. They're going to take about 25 minutes, and in the time that it takes to cook them, we'll have put everything else together really simply. Now that our potatoes are in, the next thing we need to prep are asparagus. Now whenever you buy asparagus, just get one piece of asparagus, and you hear that noise, that's a nice crisp sound. That's exactly what we're looking for. If you bend that and it's all bendy, and throw it out straight away, you're not interested. So lay it flat on your board, and we're just going to peel that last little bit. This just really adds a nice little touch for presentation. And once you've done that, what I have here is a char grill pan. Now the reason I want that is I'm going to lay my asparagus into the pan like that, and by the time it's finished cooking, I'll have those lovely marks on it, and that'll be really, really nice for presentation. So we're going to start that and get it up to a medium to high heat. We'll add some nice olive oil. And we'll just gently place them into our pan. Now with asparagus, the trick is to not overcook them. You really want a nice little crunch left in there. Nice generous amount of salt. and a nice couple of sprinkles of pepper and just give them a little shake and we're just going to let those brown up for about 30 seconds on each side and if you look at my asparagus they're really starting to brown up nicely so we'll just give those a little turn so what I have here now is a nice medium sized frying pan and I'm basically just the same as the asparagus a nice amount of olive oil in there so it's a medium to high heat, and then in go our two nice cloves of garlic, and we'll just sweat those for about 10 or 15 seconds before we put in our lovely baby plum tomatoes. So I've given them a quick wash under ice cold water, and now my garlic starting to brown up, we can put those into the pan. Once again, salt, pepper, and just keep them moving. We don't want to brown them, we're just trying to soften them up and then we're going to slip them into the oven and let them slowly roast in there at a low temperature. So if you look at my asparagus, they've taken on some nice colour now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set those to one side and at the last minute, we're just going to flash them into the oven for about 45 seconds just to warm them up. Now if you have a good look at my tomatoes, you can see that they're starting just to blister the skin. And that's the perfect stage to just drop them into the oven. I've got them on a pretty low to medium heat and they're going to take about 15 minutes. In those 15 minutes, everything else in the dish should come together nicely and all we have to do now is sear our nice fish off and cook it to perfection. So this dish is all about coordination. We've got all the little different parts of it going on at the moment. I've got the potatoes which have been on for 15 minutes, they're going to take another 10. At the same time, over here, I've set my asparagus ready. That's just a case of flashing it in the oven, so that's pretty much cooked. And in the oven, I have my lovely little slow roasted tomatoes. So with all those ingredients ready to go, there's one important thing left to do, and that's cooking our fish. Now, I've got a lovely Alaskan salmon today, which is really one of the best salmons, basically because the water up there is 
so so clean so a nice bit of salt on there we're not going to put any pepper on there because the pepper will burn when it cooks in the pan so no pepper on the fish so what I do now is instead of using an olive oil I'm going to use a little grape seed oil which has got a higher smoking temperature you could easily just use a little um, sunflower oil basically olive oil will burn if you cook it too high and we really don't want to get that taste now a lot of people are scared of cooking fish you should not be scared I'm going to show you such a simple way basically a nice high heat let your pan warm up for about 45 seconds and just place your fish just like that away from you and then you let it fall but letting it fall away from you you're never going to get splashed by that oil so just down and away now as I always say when I'm cooking fish it's so so important a lot of people might get scared they drop the fish in and I've seen people they take their wooden spoon they start to shake it move it around as you see now, I'm not doing anything to it. I'm just leaving it there for about 45, 50 seconds. And what that's going to ensure is with that nice heat, we're going to get a lovely crispy skin on it. So if you look, one way of telling if the fish is cooking or not, is you see the heat rising through it. When it changes colour, just there you can see it. That's the fish cooking. So I'm going to leave it for a good 30 more seconds. So you can see that that is really starting to cook halfway up. Now what I want to do is carefully, using a palette knife, just flip it over. Now you can really see that that skin has started to get nice and crispy. And that's exactly what we're looking for. I'm basically going to only cook it on this side for 30 seconds because those two heats will be coming up together and they're going to meet. But we want to keep the very centre a nice pink Okay, so it's been on there for 30 seconds. What I'm going to do is just flip it back over, just like that. And I'm just going to take it off the heat and leave it. Now that's it with cooked salmon, and I guarantee you it's going to be so moist and juicy in the centre. And there was absolutely nothing to it. I basically turned it three times, and that was it. So we'll leave that, and we can move on to assembling the last pieces of our dish. So the first thing that I'm going to do, pop the asparagus into the oven, and as I said, we're not actually cooking the asparagus at this stage, we're just warming it up because it's already been nicely char grilled on that lovely pan. So my salmon is pretty much ready to go, I'm just letting that rest. All I have to do now is strain off my potatoes. Now if you're not sure if your potatoes are cooked or not, a little knife just into the centre and you can see that if I set that in it goes in but there's still a little bit of give you don't want it to just crumble away you want that nice tiny little bite in your potatoes so they're absolutely ready to go I'm going to take them off the heat and strain those now so now the potatoes are in there I'm going to get the other components out of the oven which are my lovely little roasted plum tomatoes now if you look in there, you'll see that there's incredibly nice juices oozed out of those. Now out come my asparagus. And I'll just set them there as well. I'm just going to show you how to plate up one plate to make it really nice. Because I think people at home really struggle sometimes with making it look... You might have the nicest tasting food in the world, but to make it look nice on the plate really is very very important so my potatoes are cut in half I'm just going to layer about five of them in like that so the potatoes are in there and that's going to form the base the next thing we're going to go in with are our little tasty baby plum tomatoes now they could not be nicer or easier to make for that matter very very little effort involved just making sure that they were nicely seasoned our asparagus we're just going to go with five little pieces of asparagus just laid it round like that very very simple this dish that's the beauty of it the last thing that has to go on top is our salmon so just flip that back over and you can see that lovely lovely skin is really crisped up 
and I could tell that it was absolutely perfectly cooked. And now one last thing that I want to do is I want to show you how quick and simple it is to make a really tasty sauce. A little bit of chopped up basil, a couple of spoonfuls of that lovely tomato juice in on top of that. I'm also going to add a little squeeze of lime juice and that will really give it just a little freshness and really complement that salmon fantastically. And then just to finish it off, we'll just pour in a good quality extra virgin olive oil. That little marinade type sauce that I've made there has taken me 30 seconds maximum. And what I'm going to do to finish this really nice dish off is just spoon a little bit of that over the top. You can easily make that at home.